Hello everybody! Since our last video on Natto, some brave souls in the form and fitness community have actually purchased this, this strange fermented food and consumed it. And unfortunately, the reviews are in. Everybody thought it tasted really, really bad. The purpose of this video is to show you a shake recipe that I use every morning that kind of stealths the Natto into my diet so I get all the benefits of the Natto without the nasty taste. In addition, I want to go over some of the research on natto and natto kinase to help convince you that maybe this fermented soybean might be something you want to include in your diet. I'm Dr. Ben Quist, and let's get into it. The available research, which I'm going to share with you guys in a moment, some of it seems to indicate that natto may have a positive effect on our heart health and our bone health. And I don't think it's any coincidence that natto is the highest natural source of vitamin K out of any food on planet Earth. In addition to the fact that natto is the only food that has the enzyme natto kinase. And both of these things, I think, play into the factor as to why natto might be beneficial for our bone and heart health. So like we talked about in the previous video on natto, natto is created when you ferment soybeans. It's a traditional Asian food eaten in many countries like Japan. Is it a coincidence that the Japanese have a five-fold less risk of heart attack at all age groups than Americans do? Is it a coincidence that the Japanese have far fewer hip fractures than many other areas of the world? So how do we get this powerful food into our diets in a more palatable way? At the end of the video, I'm going to show you the healthy shake that I put natto in in the mornings to consume it and kind of hide it so that I can get it in and not have to deal with any of the bad taste. But first, the research. So looking at the available research on natto and natto kinase, there needs to be more. And unfortunately, there probably never will be because there isn't going to be any blockbuster drug coming out from a fermented soybean. But in the studies that we have, there are a few good placebo-controlled human research studies that show supplementing with natto kinase does lower some of the blood clotting factors. So it might support the thought process that there is this anti-thrombolytic or anti-fibrolytic effect from consuming natto kinase, which may be the reason why it helps decrease the risk of potential clotting events like a stroke or a heart attack. The fact that natto kinase may have this kind of clot busting, uh, anti-clot effect is part of the reason why if you are going to take a natto kinase supplement or you're going to eat natto, you really should talk to your doctor first, especially if you're on any type of blood thinning medication. There were several other studies on humans looking at, does natto kinase reduce blood pressure? Does it reduce cholesterol levels? Is it neuroprotective? And out of all the available research that I could find, which wasn't a ton, it seemed questionable on all those items. So more research would be necessary to, to look at those. But the study that impressed me the most was one that came out in 2020 in the British Journal of Medicine. This study was a prospective observational study done in Japan on 93,000 participants, ages 40 to about 70. And what a prospective study is, is they pick what stats they're gonna measure before they do the research, which helps make sure that the study's a little bit more I guess it would be a better study because they can't cherry pick the things that they want out of the observational study at the end. And one of the things that they found is one of the things that correlated really highly with decreasing the risk of a heart attack over that 15 year period was whether the person consumed natto or not. In addition to that, they looked at was it just because it was a fermented food and there weren't any substantial benefits from eating any other fermented foods that they found. It was just that natto. So that was, that was a pretty impressive result. There are also several other observational studies that are looking at bone health markers in women and those have also shown that natto might be something that would be good to consume for bone health. There's an abundance of research on that topic. Most of the studies are observational, but I think there's just when there's a fire and there's so much smoke coming from it, there's something there. Like we talked about in the last video, I highly believe that if you just take the natto kinase out of the natto and reduce it down to just one little enzyme and expect to get all the benefits that those people got in that Japanese study over that period of time, I think that's the wrong approach. I think there are so many other things that are in that substance, like the vitamin K2, the copper, the magnesium, the prebiotic, the probiotic, all of those different things that are in natto that it's it's kind of the whole of its parts that are helping people and to reduce it down i still think you're better off eating natto so that brings me to the next part of our video let's go to the kitchen and let's make a natto health shake 
Okay, our first ingredient is going to be some type of seed. I usually like to pick from flax, chia, or hemp, which are the super seeds, two tablespoons. So pick whatever your favorite one is. Got a little bit of fiber with that, protein, omega-3 fatty acids, just to name a few things. Then we're on to stabilized rice bran. This is a new one that I've been adding lately. Two tablespoons of that. It is a fantastic, excellent natural source of the mineral magnesium and also B vitamins, not to mention fiber and other good things. Next, we're gonna add a pinch of amla. Amla is a spice. It is super high in flavonoids, also a really potent source of vitamin C and vitamin A. It's a great antioxidant. Oh, and then here comes our secret ingredient. We've got the natto. We all know about all the wonderful things that we've been talking about as far as that goes, and that's gonna be that two to three tablespoons we talked about before. Ooh, just glob it right in there, bloop. Next, we're moving on to leafy greens. So what I typically do is I put a handful on the countertop. Those are for chewing while I'm blending my shake. Because as we've talked about in previous videos, Eating cruciferous, like arugula, or eating leafy greens, it's the, it's the chewing action that adds some of the benefit to that. So chew them, but also put them in your shake for that NO production. I throw a banana in there. That's mainly for texture and consistency. I know it's a higher glycemic index fruit. You can either do a half or whole, or you can omit that if you don't want to put that in there. Then we got our berry blend. Berries are obviously fantastic for potassium, magnesium, vitamin C, fiber, prebiotics, um, you know, so all those things that promote a healthy gut. Uh, so a big, I usually do about a cup of berries in the shake. Oh, plop those berries in there. Oh, can't let that one get away. Next, we are moving on to allulose. So this is that sweetener, that rare sugar that we talked about. It has no calories in it, but it acts as a prebiotic fiber for us, um, has possible potential health benefits. Then we're plopping in a little bit of creatine monohydrate. That's the only supplement in here. I'm a big believer in creatine. I think there's plenty of benefits that come from that. And then of course we got a little bit of protein because what's a shake without protein powder, right? The brand that I use is Complement. It is a nut and bean uh, blend of proteins, but you can plop whatever one you like in there. And then we're gonna finish out with our base. I typically do unsweetened almond milk with this, and you put in as much as you need to get your shake blended. That was a lot of almond milk. Then plop it on your blender, blend away. Then enjoy. One other thing to mention is that the typical dose of natto, if you wanted to achieve the results that the nanokinase studies showed and also the larger observational study of natto, you would want to take about two to three tablespoons of natto a day. Just like we talked about in the last video, that costs about $1.50 a day. All right, thank you for watching this video. I don't think there's a more healthy way to start your day than that shake that I just showed you the recipe for. It has too many vitamins, minerals, fiber, essential fatty acids, mac great macronutrients like protein. There's too much in there to even list, but you get your entire daily value of fiber amongst many other things. So please give that a, a try. And it's a great way to get that natto into your diet without having to just spoon it into your mouth like you saw Rock do in the last video. Please like our video, please subscribe to our channel, and please comment below if you'd like to see any other content from us. And most importantly, have a great rest of your day.